Welcome to 959. We're your hosts, Azan Seth and Surya Raman. And we're here to help our listeners derive maximum value in less than 10 minutes. Hi, I'm Yashoda. I am the CEO of Hubu. Uh, hi, I'm Ria Kalaturi. I'm the CTO. So we literally grew up on rose farms our entire life. Uh, lived in Ethiopia and Kenya and Bangalore. <laughs> apply for like 15 30 days what are we doing still doing our own deliveries like we should be doing it through vendors uh and you know how to market that how to mm-hmm. communicate that to customers all of that kind so of so basically of like um exiting last mile logistics and giving it to other players really helped you concentrate on just <laughs> packaging the flowers and scaling mm-hmm. up and more than just like exiting right uh, it helped us take a step back and say what are our strengths mm-hmm. and our strength was the product right and if the product is really good how do you get that product to customers in in the best way possible and and as many ways as possible yeah. and that was, i mean we could keep doing our deliveries but you would only reach certain customers through our website and we still do website deliveries but mm-hmm. when we're available on different platforms like say a big basket or a fresh to home or others suddenly the product is very accessible so the customer like we what we realized is customers it's not like they wouldn't buy a product because they didn't like it they didn't mm. know where to get it or they okay. didn't have exposure to it right it. so when we were available on all these different platforms then they were they could at least try out mm-hmm. the product and see for themselves whether it worked like they were already ordering for example amazon fresh fresh to home daily and stuff mm-hmm. and so now uh Huvu was just another thing they had to add to their baskets exactly mm-hmm. so it made it very convenient for them yeah Got and it. I think for us subscription was one distribution channel mm-hmm. but we were so married to it at that point until we stepped back and says it's just a distribution channel it. Wow. So how many cities are you in now? So we're in Gurgaon, Noida, Hyderabad, of course Bangalore, Shimoga and Mangalore and recently launched in Coimbatore. Wow. Seven so cities. seven cities. Yeah. And uh last year this time how many cities were you in? Bangalore. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Guys, yeah, so that's what I call um hyper scaling um seven <laughs> cities and you know six new cities in one year that's amazing um and so you know this was all during covid so how did covid affect your business and um you know what did you do to face those challenges mm-hmm. or um you know just deal with new circumstances mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Interestingly we grew the most during covid. Wow. Um there was a huge spike in demand, you know, just given the situation yeah. people wanted a trusted brand and mm-hmm. um a lot of the markets and stuff that they were buying from before were no longer available. Okay. Uh so we saw a huge demand coming in which was great. Um a huge learning for us was uh scaling to mm-hmm. kind of meet that demand uh because of course during covid um expanding your team is harder, expanding your supply chain is harder. Mm-hmm. Uh so that's where a lot of our effort went in, right? Um and you know we were constantly catching up to the demand which was a great problem to have but yeah. um it allowed us to learn a lot more in terms of how do we want to scale which mm-hmm. is where the idea of the machine came in because we're like if we're constantly catching up to demand there's something that needs to be done here yeah. uh we have to increase our capacity in a way that is again scalable uh for mm-hmm. a longer period of time right so we took that step back i remember the festival season last year was yeah. crazy like july august september october and once that was done we're like okay time for us to take a step back focus okay. on what went well and how do we apply it so we're ready for the next so year. innovation internally rather than externally mm-hmm. absolutely yeah we we're, we're a big proponent of doing everything in house uh because even even if that experiment doesn't work mm-hmm. um you know you learn a lot through it and then definitely you, yeah and um that that learning never goes away you're like constantly building for mm-hmm. that if not like then you you you'd use that learning in some other experiment absolutely, or something like yeah. that absolutely <laughs> yeah and like even if you're like uh um, you know then going outside and like taking someone's help do it you know yeah. exactly what you want and you know where you fell short so it's easier to like work with a partner mm-hmm. got it we were just uh telling someone this recently that if you call everything an experiment you never have to say you failed you can just mm-hmm. say i'm going to trial too oh, uh nice. and i think that's what we do with everything like business model tech like marketing nice. whatever it's all experiments it's all yeah. experiments this podcast is an experiment in your marketing <laughs> <laughs> like literally yeah. someone told me this actually during the techstars program one of the mentors he said a startup is just an experiment to building a long lasting business wow. and that was a great way to think about it it takes the pressure off it makes it more exciting yeah. and you're more flexible right you're adaptable to however things come along nice and um, so at the end of the day uh, yes you guys are a startup but you're also a social enterprise um and i know you're helping empower uh women workers and flower ladies so can you tell us a little bit about that and um like how are you helping them and for example 
uh, during covid like when uh, these ladies couldn't go and deliver uh, you know what were they doing and how are the ladies themselves coping with uh, less work mm-hmm. yeah okay. <laughs> i can start and then we i can take over uh, i mean we are in a predominantly uh, women dominated industry which is super exciting That's amazing. for us yeah. um and you know like even when we think about farmers and everything we always think about men mm-hmm. but when you actually see most of the the workforce on farms uh, and of course the market ladies all of them are women it's just that they're not getting enough recognition as the drivers in the in this entire supply chain uh so it was exciting for us to be in this space and honestly it was a huge strength like we wanted to work with the uh, with this women dominated um team and all of that right uh the biggest focus from our end has always been whoever we take in how do we help them upskill mm-hmm. uh and how do we constantly adapt right uh so that upskilling has always been a huge part like some of the ladies that joined us you know one of them was telling us that um before she worked for us she had never taken a bus before she had never worked anywhere she had done like some gardening from her house and that's it so when she told her family she was going to get a job they were like how are you going to take the bus to work that was the biggest problem for wow. them because they're like you're you're not going to know how to make it yeah. now she's one of our like top sales ladies and she goes to all the different markets in bangalore and sells to the ladies in those markets wow by herself her. yeah by yeah. herself and you know she's like a very bold and like strong person and you got to be aggressive when you're a sales person right and she yeah. does all that and she's like two years back my family was like can you take a bus to work right yeah. uh so it, yeah. it, it's great to hear such stories we can talk about our ladies forever but i'll tell <laughs> one more story so we recently started selling in the local markets mm-hmm. uh and a part of that is using the app sharing locations and all cuz we want to make it scalable right mm-hmm. so it has to be tech enabled uh and so our ladies who were training to kind of go do these sales were like how do we do this i don't know how to use whatsapp blah 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 mm-hmm. um so we were like just go you have to do it you'll figure it out recently we were celebrating someone's birthday in the office i turn around and this meek lady like manju who's the soft spoken one in our office who was like i don't know how to use a phone yeah. all of that stuff she's like videotaping everything taking photos like asking people to pose and we were like what is this transformation yeah. she's so comfortable with the phone now yeah. um and i think that's been so exciting for us as mm-hmm. founders seeing our team grow and take up these new challenges cuz you know we can speak you know whatever we want mm-hmm. but they're the ones actually going out there and doing it mm-hmm. um and their belief in us like when we bully them and we're like just go try it mm-hmm. they actually go and try it yeah. right so they really are backbone so, and yeah. so when we started i think i was telling you this before surya but like um when we started everyone would be like are you in competition with the local flower lady mm-hmm. and the answer was yes and no yes yeah. for the very short period when we were setting up the brand but mm-hmm. the longer term like plan was always this is a huge distribution network that's available and mm-hmm. they're selling flowers we're selling flowers mm-hmm. we just want to sell a better product to the end customer right and if we can do that through these ladies that's great i mean for them and us right it's not that we are losing out here it's a great you know opportunity that's available and hasn't been tapped into so why not right if we can provide them a better product we can provide them that support um we're helping them grow their business and in turn also growing ours which was so exciting for us so now like you know post the lockdown and everything when we started selling to these ladies i think that was like such an exciting turn for us because this is something that we've been waiting to build up to for the last 2 years yeah actually one of our mentors told us um you know there's so many people going after the kirana shop or going after the delivery boy mm-hmm. but who's going after that basket that the street vendor is selling mm-hmm. and if when we're tapping into these flower ladies that's the basket we're going after and that's huge real estate right like mm-hmm. in indian distribution channels that's one of the biggest one um so whether it's flowers or other fresh produce or other puja products i think you know the the sky's the limit when it comes to these ladies mm-hmm. and what they can do wow Thank you so much, guys. I've learned a lot from uh, the Huvu team, and uh, thank you again for coming on our show. Um, I heard Ria, you have some, a little something for me. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <I do. laughs> yeah. So these are our holy colors, thank which we so made much. out of fresh flowers, and so these guys, are fresh holy colors. Yeah. And this is their uh, subscription flowers, <laughs> which you can order too. um in the link below you'll see um all the places that you can order huvu fresh so thank you so much for joining us today listeners and thank you so much for joining us on 959 thank you so much surya thank you for having us